Hi guys, welcome to my channel and indeed my first video of FL and production content. So welcome to the channel and also to my crib. So first question, what is this channel about? Well, it's going to be about two things predominantly. First of all, music. I'm going to be putting all of my mixes up. They're going up weekly. All of my zone tracks content is already on the channel. And the other thing I'm going to be doing is what you're looking at now. So it's going to be FL content. It's going to be production based, all about hard trance. VSTs, the works, everything to do with production that I know I will be putting onto the tube for you. So without further ado, this is the first video and this is a very special video because it is indeed a template hard trance track. It's just under two minutes. It's just pure hard trance in the kind of style that I am quite well known for um, and it's free. That's the best thing about this. It's absolutely free. It uses stock plug plugins so you should just be able to download this, in, run it on your FL, and it should work as you're gonna hear it. So let's just have a quick listen to the entire project, see if you like it. If you do like it, then carry on listening. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, completely free. All you need is FL version uh, 20.8.3 or above, and you should be able to run this without any problems. So let's just really quickly go through the project, the mixer tracks, what I've done, just for a quick overview so you know, you can see what I, I did and you know take it from there. Um, the purpose of this really is for your inspiration. So you can, you can do whatever you want with it. You can layer the bases, you can change the keys, you can write a completely new track, go crazy it's all there it's for you it's completely free uh, there's no royalties um attached it's royalty free so um you know please have fun working on this project so we'll start off looking at the mixer channel um all that's really on there is just at this active at least is this limiter and all this limiter is really doing is just catching some peaks um just so i can turn up a little bit louder for the purposes of this demo um if you want to by all means remove it in fact i would probably encourage you to remove it uh, so that you can then go and kind of uh, produce properly because you don't you don't want to produce use with with a limiter on your master that's that's bad form that's bad form. Moving on, we have obviously the kick, the cornerstone of any decent hard trance track. Um, I've kept all of the mix inserts as simple as possible. So all this one has, for example, is a really basic EQ. Um, this patch of preset, which is really cool, is basically just parallel compression. I um, definitely recommend checking out patch out if you get a moment. Some really cool features and a low pass and a high pass filter using Fruity's um, stock filter there. Um, this is being sent into a kick and bass bus, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, there is a kick gate, which is paired with the intro kick in the beginning, just to give the track a little bit of kind of like a bit more of a groove and push pull. So if I just take it back to here, just to give you an example. See, it just kind of occupies that low end, gives the kick a bit of meat, 
before I just un re you know, essentially remove the filter and slam that kick back in later in the track. Channel three and channel four are essentially just FX kicks. So uh, let's just give you a quick preview just to remind you what they sound like. Really not much again going on there, just a little bit of distortion, more EQ, obviously a fair amount of reverb just to make it sit in the mix. Next bit up we have is the intro bass. Let's just remind you what that sounds like. And then there is of course the main bass and the sub bass, which I'm sure you loved. So just a quick note on these, these have all been resampled using the Fruity plugin Direct Wave. Essentially what Direct Wave does is it enables you to create a sample based BST out of a third party plugin. So for example, the intro bass was made with Silent, Silent, I should say, and the main bass was made with Adam Cesarbo Viper, which is literally the best plugin I've ever used. Google it, buy it, this video is not sponsored. Now that I've stopped fangirling over Viper, um, just a quick uh, look at the routing that I've done on the bass here. So you have the main bass, which is essentially split into main and sub parts. I've done that using the fancy new frequency splitter provided by those lovely guys at ImageLine in this most recent update. All that's really doing is sending everything below 200 hertz to the sub bass channel, uh, which is channel six for a separate processing. Um, in that channel, all I've done is put a fruit bass boost Obviously, EQ, low pass cut, um, and gross beat for the side chaining. Uh, the main bass, a little bit more complicated to get that sound to kind of be fat and also fit as well. Um, I have some stereo enhancer there, um, destructor for distortion, two lots of EQs, uh, frequency splitter, obviously, and then another EQ just to roll off the bottom and kind of boost out those mids a little bit again. The side chain is done with gross beat, but a little, um, a little different curve to the to the sub bass, um, and a little limiter again, just to kind of maximise the loudness. And and all of these, the intro bass, uh, sub bass, and main bass, are all sending to um, one bass send, where there's just a touch of compression, just to try and kind of glue the sound together before routing it to the kick and bass bus with the kick. There's a couple of extra bass channels on there, notably the bass rider and the LFO bass. These aren't consistent bass sounds. These are actually more kind of background sounds. Um, I'll, um, I'll give you just an ex a quick example now. So that just kind of acts as an additional riser before the drop. Um, and then you have the LFO bass, which I believe just sits here. That just basically take, it helps the transition from one section of the track to, to another before more elements are introduced and just to kind of break up the flow a little bit. Okay, so that's the kick and the bass all gone through. So now we're gonna look at the percussion real quick. Let me just turn these channels on here. So we have a fairly standard set of percussion. I'm sure anyone that's kind of made any hard trance before be, will be fully aware of the kind of stuff that's in here. So we'll just start off with the basic one. So we have a clap. Yes, it has a sound gu sound goodizer on it. Yes, I love it. No, I don't care. Um, there's also a EQ. These EQ cuts here essentially just take out some resident noises um, and a reverb because I quite like putting reverb on claps. I think it adds a little something, but obviously it's not everyone agrees with that. But you can remove that reverb. I, I won't be angry with you if you remove that reverb from this project. Uh, next up is the ride. I've panned this to the left to give it some space away from the open hi-hat. So together they sound like this. You get the idea. Uh, a couple of loops that are also running throughout this section of the track as well. So you've got loop one here. And you have loop two as well. There is a third loop that only runs in the opening part of the track. and it's to on totally the wrong channel. How embarrassing. There we go, much better. Um, so these are all looped into, they were sent, I should say, to a loop send, um, run through a hard clip, just to kind of really dirty those sounds up, an EQ to remove the, uh, the low end that that would essentially give, 
um, as a result of that hard clip and some gross beat again for side chaining. And all of these percussion elements, they all run into a perk bus, touch of EQ, bit of multiband compression just to kind of glue the sound and limiting again just to take off the peaks. And that's pretty much it for the percussion. A couple of extra sounds before we get to the instruments. We have obviously a fairly standard one, which pretty much all dance music has a crash. Quite wishy-washy if you like it like that. Um, I mean, usually I would have probably less delay and reverb on there, but I, I think it fits in this in this instance. And then obviously you've got um, the standard cornerstone of any dance track, the snare. Leave your comments about how rubbish the snare is. Um, by all means, love them. Um, so those are those and then finally on to well not uh, penultimately I should say on to some of the uh, the instrument elements so we have um, what I've labeled a bleeper there's that and I've also paired that with um, some sampled acid as well, which you can mainly hear right at the end of the crescendo of the track. So let me just solo that for you now. Yeah, that's a bit dirty. I know what you're thinking. I know you think that I've cut way too much out of that. And normally I would agree with you, but it, I needed to be done for it to sit in the mix. So if you just have another listen, you might see what I'm saying. <laughs> You know, don't like it, remove it. You can put that low end back in if you prefer. Do whatever you want. As I said before, it's a completely free project, royalty free. Go and have some fun with it. Uh, last couple of things in here are sweeps. So these are essentially just your white noises that go down and up. Uh, let's play what, a couple of them here. Um, and I added in an FX here as well, I think. Nope. There it is. And last, but by no means least, a cheeky little vocal here. So this again, you um, EQ, reverb, delay, pretty much the same for uh, most of these as well. And that ladies and gentlemen, is literally all there is to it. A couple of quick extra bits. First of all, there are a couple of automation clips. Um, they've got your kick, low pass and high pass, and the same with the bass bus. Obviously, I've done this on the bus so that it, it affects all of the basses at the same time, so you don't end up having different automations for different bass sounds. Um, there is a high pass um, on the percussion, and there is also a pan on the acid so it kind of just goes and drifts from left to right just gives it a little bit of extra movement but as far as automation goes there really isn't that much in this project at the moment uh, another cool thing about this project is that literally i've done as much processing as i can outside of this project so there's a project before this where i did a lot more processing on on all of the sounds and then I resampled them essentially and put them back in as original sounds and just added the finishing kind of touches to get them to fit. So, I mean, I'm at the moment, as you can see here, my PC is sitting at about 3%. Um, if I just run the whole project, if I just mute that for you, just play here. 19. Okay, that, that tops out at about 19. So it's it's not it's not exactly using a lot of um a lot of CPU at the moment. Um, so you, you shouldn't have too much problems running this project um, without kind of having any CPU problems, fingers crossed, of course. And that brings me to the end of my very first real bit of YouTube content. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you like the template. If you do, please like, subscribe, leave a message. Let me know what you thought of it. Um, if you make something with it as well, I would really like to hear that. That would be so cool to know that I've inspired someone to actually write a piece of music. That would just be amazing. But if not, that's absolutely fine. If you have any suggestions as well, I'd love to I'd love to hear them. In the future, what can you expect to hear? Well, a lot of stuff about VSTs. I'm planning a couple of them at the moment. Future tutorials, as well as obviously temp templates such as this. And obviously lots and lots and lots of hard trance music. I've got loads of mixes still to put up on the YouTube as well. So keep an eye out for that. So 
please go subscribe and hopefully I'll see you all again very soon.